get my desk job back, and then she's gone out of my life forever. Yeah, I don't understand. Oh, it's really not that hard to understand. Well, it doesn't make any sense. Therefore, I don't understand. Whoa, Scrappy. Scrappy, what's going on? We were in the car. I was thirsty, okay? And he wouldn't give me a sip of his water. Why not, Alice? Yeah, why not? Because then you get your lip gloss on it and I don't want to drink from it. It's gross. Does it matter? My lip gloss? What's going on? Their honeymoon phase is officially over. Mm -hmm. We never what had a honeymoon, honeymoon phase? phase. They got the seven year itch, except they did it in seven weeks. You never listen to me. You never think things through. You two are spending too much time together. Mm -hmm. We take regular breaks from each other or else we go crazy. We go crazy. You two need a break. Yes, oh, yeah. that would be great. Too bad. You're up. Dr. Sophie is dead? Who is Dr. Sophie? Dr. Sophie Fernwood. She's written three self-help bestsellers, has a hit podcast, and an upcoming TV special. According to her website, Dr. S has helped millions of people find grounded and long-lasting happiness through the lens of gratitude and emotional authenticity. What a load of malarkey. You're not into therapy, I take it? Therapists are the lowest of low on the con artist ladder. They're not con artists, Max. They're doctors. They burrow into your mind and toy with your thoughts. All for the purpose of making a profit. That's a con artist. Okay, yeah, they gotta make a living just like any other doctor, but their purpose is to help people. Have you ever had therapy? Yeah. Did it help? It's... See? Because you're not a teapot. A teapot? According to Bruce Lee, in order to have a strong mind, it has to be like water. Shapeless. Formless. Put water into a teapot, it turns into a teapot. Therapists try to turn you into teapots. But you and me, my friend, we cannot be molded or manipulated. We are not teapots. I have no idea what you just said. You ever get tired of that? Because I'll never get tired of that. So this is what therapy buys, huh? It's what three bestsellers and a lot of gullible people buy. 5.5 mil. That's my guess. Make that six mil. There's gotta be at least $500,000 in cash just in this pool. time she drowned? Nope. Okay, well, uh, when will you know? I won't. Why's that? Because she didn't drown. Well, everyone's a little punchy today. Today was supposed to be my day off, but my colleague had a travel emergency. As always, no respect. I hear that. When did she die? Last night, sometime between 8 p.m. and midnight. Blunt force trauma to the temple. The blow caused an internal hemorrhage. She was dead when she hit the water. Any signs of a struggle? None that I can see. Forensics couldn't find a murder weapon. You got any ideas? Something with a really sharp edge. Maybe something that the killer grabbed at the last moment. I'll let you know if I find anything. Okay, thanks. No sign of forced entry, no sign of a struggle. She had to have known the killer. We found a safe upstairs, totally untouched. Same with all of her loose jewelry. A lot of high-end stuff there. So it wasn't a robbery? Nope. And the question is, what's with all the cash in the pool? Ma'am, can't come in here. I need to get inside. This is an active crime scene. I know. I'm Daphne, Dr. Sophie's business manager. So you're her business manager and her emergency contact. She doesn't have any family or friends. Her clients and fans are colleagues. We're her family. Why was it you needed to get in here? I need her laptop. Her latest book is on it. Dream interpretation, it'll be huge. Any one of these people could steal it. When the laptop's found, it'll be taken to evidence, so I can assure you nothing's gonna be stolen off of it. Out of curiosity, how much would a leaked copy of one of those books go for? She got a million dollar advance for it. Gotcha. Hey guys, we need to find that laptop, stat. Max. 
When was the last time you saw her? A few days ago, at the Fernwood. The Fernwood? It's the wellness center Sophie opened a couple of years ago. The physical embodiment of her life's work. The Fernwood has therapists who specialize in several types of treatments. She wanted to create a place where people could work on their issues through multiple disciplines. So multiple therapists tell you how messed up you are instead of just one. What was her mood like last time you saw her? Not great, actually. She was anxious, distracted. Oh, my God. Is everything all right? All three of her books just shot to the top of the bestseller lists. Again, now you understand how important it is that book not be leaked. Sales will be off the charts. That sounded terrible, didn't it? Yeah. Kinda. I'm sorry. I still can't believe this is happening. Is there anything else I need to get back to the Fernwood? People started calling as soon as the news broke. We're holding a gathering so we can grieve together. A lot of people are going to feel very lost without her. Right. Well, one last question. Where were you last night? I was on a red-eye flight back from a publishing conference in London. I landed at 6 this morning. I still have the boarding pass on my phone. I'll take a look at that. Who's going to be at this gathering? Friends, clients, coworkers. Here it is. OK, you're free to go. Thank you. Show her out. So if everyone who's close to her is going to be there. Maybe. The murderer will be there, too. You know, the most interesting thing about what she said is what she didn't say. I mean, yeah, she's Dr. Sophie's emergency contact, but she never once spoke about their friendship. Did you notice that? Lots of people who are together don't get along. Here, maybe we can learn something from the lighthouse inside. Did you steal that? She had, like, 50 copies. This isn't evidence. OK, they were still sealed inside the box. Oh, this one's signed. This is probably worth something now. Why did you take that? These people just lost their Pied Piper, which means they're vulnerable. Vulnerable people want to talk. So we just need to speak their language. For example, all of your life, you've been told that you are the storm. You are the hurricane. When in fact, you are the lighthouse. What the hell is that supposed to mean? It means that I am the lighthouse, and you are the dark storm. Don't you ever read self-help books? Do I look like I read self-help books? So when you're going through it, who do you talk to? Nobody, I guess. Well, there has to be someone. Mark. What? You talk to Mark, don't you? <laughs> I do not talk to my cat. It makes so much sense now. You are the dark storm, and you tell your secrets to a cat. You know, now that I say it out loud, you sound kind of insane. Oh, me insane, yeah. This coming from the woman who thinks she's a lighthouse. OK. So many feels going on here. Lots of people, too. Any idea who we should talk to? I'd start with Joan, our cognitive behavioral therapist. She knew Sophie the longest. I still can't believe she's gone. I know. I don't believe I've introduced myself. My name is Maxine, and this is my husband, Colton. Hi. Hi. Were you too close? Very. We met in college. Then I was the first therapist that she hired here. Any idea who could have done something like this? No. Everybody loves Sophie. She was a light to so many. Oh. My stars. Uh, sorry, my wife's just really upset, you know? Wendell Collins? Hi. I'm a huge fan. Do you mind if I get your autograph? Uh, not the time, honey. I'm sure he doesn't mind. Sorry, who are you? Wendell Collins, Anchorman, Channel 14 News. Oh, uh, sorry, I don't really watch a lot of television. Are you saying I watch too much TV? Sorry to interrupt. Wendell, you're still okay to speak first? Yes, I can do it. Or Sophie. He could have been the killer. You're asking for autographs? You know, he's so suspicious. Yeah, I'm a detective. He's speaking at her memorial. He's clearly a fan. Everyone. Hi. Thank you for coming. We lost someone who changed all our lives. 
and the lives of millions around the world. A lot of you asked to say a few words, so let's start with one of Dr. Sophie's closest friends, our own Wendell Collins. Wendell? He's a lot better on TV. Hmm. Uh, uh. Wendell, everything you learned from Sophie is still inside you. Just speak your truth. I, uh, I. Killed. I killed Dr. Sophie Fernwood. Maybe not such a fan. I killed Dr. Sophie Fernwood. I went to her house, we argued, I hit her on the head, she fell into the pool. I killed her. And why did you kill Dr. Fernwood? Maybe he needs a teleprompter. Okay, can you tell us how you killed Dr. Fernwood? I went over to her house, we argued, I hit her, she fell into the pool, I killed her. Look, Mr. Collins, we understand that you confessed to the murder, but we're gonna need more details than that. I killed Dr. Sophie Fernwood. I went over to her house, we argued, and I hit her and she fell into the pool, I killed her. Yeah, I say it's drugs. These local news types, they get into some wild stuff. I've been to a couple industry parties. I got stories. Nobody's got time for your stories, Yates. Okay, speak for yourself. Tell me over drinks? Maybe. I'll think about it. Okay, focus, you two. There was just under $500,000 in cash floating in that pool. You think Wendell was paying off Dr. Sophie or the other way around? You saw the doc's house. She didn't need the money. Well, let's check Wendell's financials while we're checking hers. I bet you Hundy's faking it. He does the deed, confesses, pleads crazy, and then he gets off. We've seen it before. But one thing we're missing is motive. Let's form one him. A couple days in the psych ward should help with whatever this is. Yep. In the meantime, let's go talk to the last person he was with. Hmm? Don't know what's going on. He was fine yesterday. Nothing seemed to be bothering him lately? I'm his producer. We, um, uh, we talk work. We, we don't talk. That's what his therapist is for. Was for. Okay, but you did have dinner with him the night Dr. Sophie was killed. Uh, dinner with Wendell is him eating a steak while I take notes. We left Loggington's around 8.30, but I'm pretty sure he went out for drinks after. And we tracked his credit card to a lounge in Westboro. Which is in the complete opposite direction of Dr. Sophie's house. What was he seeing Dr. S for? <sighs> the show's done for, anyway. Wendell was seeing her for his anxiety. He started to trip up at the news desk. Before long, he could barely talk in front of other people. Wow. With a voice as smooth as Tennessee whiskey, popular newscaster Wendell Collins was afraid of public speaking. Was there any indication that Dr. Sophie was threatening to expose Wendell's condition, maybe to his boss? That would explain the money at the crime scene. Wendell's paying through his nose for two divorces. No way did he have hush money. What's this? Wendell's mantra. He says that before every broadcast. Has Wendell had any mental breakdowns in the past? Thanks for your help. I think we're done. Thanks. No, we're not. He didn't do it. He's innocent. So now you're not talking to me? You can't just do that. Do what? Just cut an interview short like that. Well, Wendell's innocent, so yeah, interview finito. Just because Jane said his whereabouts were accounted for? Why would she lie about that? I don't know. Sometimes people lie, Max. That's why you don't just cut an interview short. Besides, you didn't even tell me why you think Wendell's innocent. Because of the other clue that we got. Well, I got, but we're a team, so yay us. What are you even talking about? David's latent fear of public speaking comes from the perception that being watched is an existential threat. Okay, so Dr. Sophie has a client named David who also has a fear of public speaking. What's your point? Dr. Sophie uses real case studies. She's just changing their names. His personalized mantra, this is who I am, this is what I do, alleviated much of his anxiety. So Dr. Sophie was writing about Wendell. Wendell is David. But wait, there's more. The final ingredient in David's treatment plan doesn't work on everyone, but David was highly responsive to hypnosis. So Wendell Collins was hypnotized. Into confessing to Dr. Sophie's murder. How is hypnosis an alibi? That's not even a thing. It's yet another way therapists manipulate the mind. It's all a trick. 
There's no trick. It's just a state of relaxation or focus. Pretty effective in pain control, stress relief, and a healthy component of substance abuse treatment plans. What? My mom's a psychoanalyst. Cool. I didn't know that. Wouldn't kill you to ask me about my personal life sometimes. Psych called, confirmed that Collins was hypnotized into confessing to the murder. Huh. Did I really say that? I'm afraid so. But the psychiatrist we brought in has broken you of your hypnotic state. He says it's very likely you won't remember much. This is disastrous. My career is over. Oh, I don't know. You made headline news on your own network. I heard ratings were through the roof. Your producer said you two had a dinner meeting the night of the murder. We spoke to the restaurant, and they also confirmed that the two of you were there until 8.30 p.m. And then you went for drinks afterwards, alone, and stayed there until past midnight, also confirmed. So, we know you didn't kill Dr. Sophie. Of course I didn't kill Dr. Sophie. I would never hurt her. Someone wants us to believe you did. Who would want to set me up? Well, that's what we'd like to know. Besides Dr. Sophie, did you see any of the other therapists while at the center? As a matter of fact, I went through several. Art therapy, play therapy, outdoors therapy. And nothing took? My fault, really. Someone whose job is communicating to millions of people has a fear in public speaking. I was embarrassed to even ask for help. I was terrified that if the truth got out, I would be fired. I'm not proud of myself, but sometimes that fear and anxiety would make me lash out at people. At other therapists? When I get angry, I know I can be vicious. Cutting. I'm still working on it. I now know that my anger is a defense mechanism, but I don't blame any of them. Dr. Sophie was the only one that stuck with me. Without her, well, I owe her my life. Did any of the other therapists use hypnosis in their treatments? No, just Dr. Sophie. And to your recollection, nobody else has tried to hypnotize you? No. But then he wouldn't remember, would he? No, not if it was a part of the hypnotic suggestion. Lover killed Dr. Sophie, also framed Wendell Collins. All right, so if we find the hypnotist, we find the killer. Not just anybody can hypnotize somebody like that. It takes a trained professional. There's lots of them out of the Fernwood. We just got to figure out which one hated Dr. Sophie enough to kill her. Okay, you two. Saddle up. For what? You're going for therapy. Okay, let's run down our stories. Okay. Uh, I'm a cop. My dad was a cop. These therapists can sniff out a lie a mile away. Okay, you gotta stay close to the truth, but just change the details. You're not a cop. You're a cardiothoracic surgeon, just like your father was. My father is an entrepreneur, not a con man. Okay, how did we meet? We met five years ago. You saw me in a flash mob. For you, it was love at first sight. I was unimpressed, but I felt sorry for you. What? Welcome to the Fernwood. You must be Maxine and Colton. You are going to love the all-day couples intensive. It really shocks the emotional system and opens new pathways of communication. And we're going to meet all the therapists, right? Absolutely. Let the healing begin. He never listens. Please, all I ever do is listen because all you ever do is talk. Sweetie, you're a verifiable grump. I could feed you ice cream and cake and you would still be unhappy. Yeah, because I don't really care for sweets, sweetie. And I'm not unhappy. Sorry, this place feels so different. I'm so used to Dr. Sophie, you know? Is it true one of her patients was responsible for her murder? It must be affecting business. Why do you think you changed the subject? Does talking about yourself make you uncomfortable? No. Yes. He needs focus and grounding. You know, I hear hypnotherapy could help with that. I don't use hypnosis. Well, what about lighthouses? The lighthouse is just a metaphor. You seem to know what your husband needs, but what do you need? Well, there's a pair of Louboutin pumps that I've literally been dreaming about. See, this is what I'm talking about. She doesn't think there's anything wrong with her. Yeah, and I'm starting to get a good snapshot of your dynamic. I think it's time we shift into your individual sessions. So, the approach here is simple. By painting, you occupy the parts of your brain that are associated with movements, leaving your frontal lobe free to explore your thoughts and feelings. Go ahead. So you just want me to paint and talk? Exactly. All right, what do you want to talk about? Well, starting with your childhood never hurts. Knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Not much to talk about. If you could paint your childhood, what would that look like? Well, my dad was a surgeon, and my mom was a teacher. You're also a surgeon? Yeah, that's right. 
Is that what you always wanted to be? I was always assuming that's what I was going to be. By you or your father? Both. It's stressful being a surgeon. You see life and death situations every day. I never really saw it that way. I just see a problem and I follow the steps to fix that problem. Is that your father that taught you that? Yeah. He was very black and white, right and wrong. Choices were really simple for him. He would have never been in a place like this. Oh, why not? Wasn't one to talk about his feelings, let's just say that. Well, is that why you became a surgeon? To connect with him? And before you even ask, I had an amazing childhood. No siblings, just me and my parents. Hmm. Well, tell me one thing that wasn't amazing. Why, so you can dial into my psyche and tell me something terrible happened, even though it didn't? Ooh, you caught me. <laughs> I'm kidding. Let's stop here. Put your hand on the trunk of this tree. Okay. Now close your eyes and just breathe. Feel it grounding you. Now tell me about this amazing childhood. My dad was an entrepreneur. He was very poor, but very happy. One day, he met my mother. A hottie of serious means. They fell in love, and her family said they would disown her if they ever got married. She did it anyway. A true fairy tale. Hmm. What did your mother do? She learned his trade. She never worked before. She didn't have to, but turned out she was a natural, so she joined him in his business. And then I joined too when I was old enough. <laughs> It was us three against the world. Family business. And that can be stressful sometimes. We loved it. Loved? She passed away. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And your father? He's taking some time off to write a book. Hopefully a bestseller like Dr. S. Mm. But your husband's around. He's busy all the time. Surgery, you know. Which leaves you on your own. Yeah, for the first time since I was a kid. Is it hard for you, being alone? It's, uh, it's okay. Get in the car. What about the family photos? Leave them. We can't. Daddy, I call shotgun. Can you hypnotize someone into playing? Because my husband will never do this. Um, no. Let's take a seat. I was 10 years older than my brother, so I always kind of felt like I had two different childhoods. Mm. One as an only child, one with a brother. It's a tough adjustment for a kid, getting all the attention for so long and then having to share it. Not really. I spent a lot of time by myself before that, too. Why? My dad worked all the time, so I always kind of had to be my own best friend, you know? So peaceful here. Mm. It's almost hypnotizing. Mm. Speaking of which, uh, do you practice hypnotism? I hear it can be really effective. I don't. No, I think it's better to connect with things on your own timeline. Right. But tell me, what was it like when Daniel was born? Well, after Daniel was born, my dad had a heart attack, which kind of forced him into an early retirement. Well, that must have been difficult for someone who values work above everything else. Maybe for other people, but not for my dad. He took all that work ethic he had and poured all his energy into Daniel. He was really different with him than he was with me. He was always around. He was never stressed out. He didn't push Daniel like he did with me. But, you know, Danny was a different kid. He was gentle and sensitive. And he was the kind of kid who brought home birds with broken wings. Mm. <laughs> you know, it sounds like you and Daniel experienced very different fathers. Yeah. Were you ever angry with him for that? No. I could never be angry at Daniel. I wasn't talking about Daniel. With your tight-knit family no longer together, you're left with only your husband. 
Now, if you take a moment and visualize, does that make you feel secure or uneasy? Uneasy. So you don't trust your husband? Or more specifically, do you trust that he'll do the right thing? Always. And for the record, it's very annoying. There's no surprises with that one. Okay. So what I'm hearing is that well, you've learned to mistrust everyone outside your circle, and well, now that your circle no longer exists, your, your mistrust is redirected. And to who? Myself? You don't think I trust myself? I'm suggesting that maybe you don't trust yourself enough to trust someone else. Like Halton? Because I do trust him. I really do. Well, that can be scary. If you trust Colton as you did your family, that, that could change the way you see people, the world, everything. Do you believe your wife loves you? Sure. Do you believe that she would think any less of you if you weren't a good surgeon? No. But it matters to you? Yeah. Would you say that being a surgeon is what matters most in your life? Yeah, it's... it's... It's who I am. It's what you do. I like to get to it. I don't practice therapy that dances around the issues. Your father only connected with you when it was about work, but he loved your brother Daniel simply for who he was. Is that fair to say? Yeah, that's fair. From a very young age, you were taught that your self-worth is only measured by your work. And without it, you're not worthy to be loved. Did you ever trust anyone and had that trust broken? Once. Do you want to talk about it? No. But, I mean, hasn't everyone? Dr. S let someone in and she got burned too. That's what Daphne told me anyways. It wouldn't take what Daphne says to heart. She was no longer really a part of Dr. Sophie's circle. Why not? People change. Now, back to you. You came to the Fernwood to save your marriage. That's a great step. I am now going to ask you the central question of every relationship. And your answer to it is all you need to know. Are you better together or apart? Hey. How'd it go? Uh, good. You? Good. Yeah, it's... Exhausting. I hear that. I'm officially talked out. Really? You talked out? I know, right? Damn it. Come on. All those therapists, not a single one of them use hypnosis. Well, so they say, but. Any one of them could have learned how to do it. True. Although they all seem to genuinely like Dr. Sophie. Well, that's what we thought about Daphne, but what was she searching for? You know, Joan told me that Daphne and Dr. S were on the outs. I don't know why. I think we already have something that might give us the answer to that. Come on. Forensics just came back with Dr. Sophie's laptop. Look at this. How is our happy couple? Have you set boundaries? Started active listening. Oh, would you look at that? Daphne was Dear John. What the hell's a Dear John? It's a breakup letter. Dr. Sophie emailed Daphne three days before she was killed and dumped her. But Daphne was on a plane when the doc was murdered, so. She could have hired someone to do it. Well, she was about to lose her only client, a best selling book, and a budding empire. That's one hell of a motive for a murder right there. Let's bring in Daphne. I'm allowed to be in her office. I'm her manager. Ex-manager. We saw the breakup email. Why didn't you tell us that Dr. Sophie had dissolved her business relationship with you? Five years. Five years. She couldn't even call me. I'm the one who molded her into a star. I helped her start the Fernwood. I organized her book tours. So then why'd she drop you? Oh, she wanted Brittany Brown levels of fame. She figured little old me wasn't big enough to get her there. Is that why you killed her? What? 
Wendell confessed I saw him. You saw him. Please, we both know that that was a false confession. I was on a flight when she died. You could have hired somebody to do it. Sophie betrayed me, but I didn't kill her. She was brilliant at what she did. I thought that if I could find the manuscript, I could publish it before anyone knew she was dumping me. And you'd still get your cut of her big book. Her dream interpretation book is going to be her biggest bestseller yet. If anyone can ever find it. She hit it? Probably. For all of her books, I would never see an outline. Chapters, a first draft would just appear in my email one day, a finished manuscript ready for publishing. She even spell checked it. Maybe she didn't trust me. Maybe I'll sign Joan as my next client. Is she a really bad writer? I've read a few of her papers. She really knows her stuff, but she's just so... So... Boring. That's what made Sophie great. She had that it factor. People loved her. We checked all of Daphne's financials, emails, phone records. It's not a thing that suggests she hired a hitman. I checked the trash. The trash is trash. If this woman wrote a book, there ain't no sign of it. Are you sure? I mean, you can't ever really delete anything. For example, and I thought I scrubbed it, but if you search slurp goblins on hey, my hey, computer... We don't want to know. Hello, I do. Drinks at O'Leary's. You pay, I'll play. Okay. Why wouldn't Dr. Sophie have a copy of her book on her laptop? She told Daphne it was finished, right? Yeah, and it's not like writers lie about how much they write ever. Hold up, I remember seeing a book about dreams on Dr. Jones' desk. Coincidence? I think not. Especially because that's a subject of Dr. S's new book. I mean, all therapists talk about dreams. It's very common. But Dr. Joan and Dr. S went to college together. Joan was the hard-working study buddy, and Dr. S was the party girl. Maybe Joan was doing research on dreams for Dr. S, got jealous and stole her manuscript. We can't make up a motive just because you think you saw a book on dreams on Joan's desk. Well, I think it's worth looking into. I follow your leads, why can't you follow mine? <laughs> I follow your leads all the time. Yeah, but I have to drag you kicking and screaming to even follow my brilliant ideas. Okay, I think brilliant is a bit of a stretch. Stop! Did you two learn nothing in therapy? Partnership is like a canoe. If you both paddle in the same direction, you go places. Wonderful, magical, erotic, hallucinatory places. But if each of you paddle in the opposite direction, what happens? What happens? We don't Probably do going circle. That's right. So line up, look forward, and get moving. OK, I'm sorry. We'll follow your lead. Thank you. Anybody else here need fixing? Yeah, I had this thing. I can't help you. Nobody can. Thanks, Ricky. What did he say? OK, Ricky was able to get into Sophie's account. There's that $500,000 withdrawal made the day before she died. Yeah, we already know that. Yeah, but you noticed another pattern. Sophie transferred $30,000 into an unknown account when her first book came out, then another fifty dollars for her second, and then seventy five dollars for her latest bestseller. Sounds like payment to me. Dr. Sophie had a ghostwriter. What if that's why Joan had the Book of Dreams on her desk? What if she's the ghostwriter? Do you remember when Daphne said that Sophie got a million dollar advance for her next book? 75K is nothing compared to a million bucks. Maybe Joan decided she wanted half. Dr. Sophie's getting all the accolades and the money. Joan's working behind the scenes, doing all the research, working her little fingers to the bone. Okay, so Joan blackmails Dr. Sophie. She goes to her house. They get into an argument. They fight. Joan panics. She hits her. She dies instantly and falls into the pool. Yeah, but how, how does Wendell fit into all this? Well, if Joan's a ghost writer, she would have access to all of Dr. Sophie's interviews. So she would have known that Wendell was particularly susceptible to hypnosis. Making him the perfect ball guy. So all she had to do was hypnotize him. After that, she's just one trigger phrase away from getting him to confess to murder. It's <laughs> pretty damn good theory. Wanna go test it out? Hello? Hey, Wendell. It's looking good. Thank you. What can I do for you two? We just wanted to hear you speak your truth. Just speak your truth. 
I killed Dr. Sophie Fernwood. I went to her house. We argued. I hit her. She fell into the pool. I killed her. There it is. That's the trigger. I killed Dr. Sophie Fernwood. I went to her house. We argued. I hit her. She fell into the pool. I killed her. We broke him, didn't we? I killed Dr. Sophie Fernwood. I went to her house. We argued. I hit her. She fell into the pool. I killed her. Oh, you scared me. What are you doing here? Oh, last minute crisis. We forgot our love languages. The center's closed. Oh, we'll be quick. We just came to hear you speak your truth. Honey, it doesn't have the same effect on her as it did on Wendell. No. Oh. What happened, Joan? Dr. Sophie gave you the $500,000 you asked for, right? Why don't you just take it and walk away? Who are you? Hey, Joan? Joan, stop! Hey! Joan, stop! Wait! any closer. Joan, uh, why don't we go inside where we can talk, huh? What's the point? My life, my career, it's all over anyway. Look, I know you didn't mean to kill Dr. Sophie. I really didn't. I just wanted my share of the advance. I was owed at least that. But she didn't give you any credit. Did she? No. She laughed at me. Said I was the same sucker I was in college when I used to do her research. I wrote her papers even back then. And that made you mad, right? It did. What happened, Joan? I tried to leave with the bag of money, but she grabbed it started pushing me again and again. <laughs> so you hit her with something? One of her own books. It, it was on the patio table. I, I didn't think it would kill her. I, I mean, I only hit her once. Exactly. It was just a mistake, right? She just fell in the pool. I freaked out and ran. It all happened so fast I didn't mean to do. <laughs> Joan, wait! Wait. Wait. What if Daphne publishes your book? You already wrote three bestsellers. No one is gonna read a book in earnest written by a therapist in prison. Are you kidding me? That's like the best hook ever. There are computers in jail, right? Yeah. Still here? Yeah. Yeah, just finished taking down her statement. I heard it was a pretty intense night. Yeah, there was a second there where I really thought she was gonna jump. Yeah. It's close. Yeah. Yeah, I've been meaning to ask you. How was doing all that therapy? You get anything out of it? Yeah, uh I think. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't really processed it yet. We probably could have used some therapy back when we were partners, huh? <laughs> <laughs> probably. You know, I've been going for about a year now. Really? Yeah. Uh, ever since your brother died. I, I wanted to help you. I didn't know how. And, and you didn't want to talk about it. So it made me realize... <clears throat> I didn't know what I was doing as far as managing my feelings and emotions and all that stuff. Well, how's it been going? Good. Slow. Damn slow. Good. Where's Yates? Oh, I, I, don't, I don't know. She gave me the safe word tonight. The safe word? Oh, yeah. Uh, if either one of us is getting on each other's nerves and we need some space, you can give a safe word. No questions asked. I know I'm going to regret this, but what's the safe word? <laughs> Ice cream. <laughs> Ice cream? Okay, I was expecting worse. What does it mean? She says our partnership is like ice cream. It's awesome. It's reliable. 
Too much of it can give you gas. <laughs> that's actually, uh, that's actually kind of sweet. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I had to veto the first five safe words. They were disgusting. <laughs> you heading out? No, I gotta finish these reports. So. All right. Well, I just want to say, if you ever need to work things out, therapy's good. Thanks. Yeah. Appreciate that. You talking to your cat doesn't count. Okay, I don't talk to my cat. That's not what Max says. Hey, what are you doing here? I just had some drinks with the gates. Oh boy, does she have some stories. <laughs> also, I have something for you. What? Your painting from the Fernwood. What do you think? Honestly, it's pretty terrible. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. What am I supposed to do with this? Burn it, because if anybody finds out that came from your brain, you'll be locked up for life. And then I'll have no one. Don't worry. I wouldn't let that happen. You make too good of a team. Um, I should, should really get back to this report. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice night. I'll probably go for a walk. Don't work too late. You got it.